Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at a CPA simulation that deals with pension expense. This CPA simulation, could also you could also see it in, in, in your intermediate accounting textbook. So basically what we need to do, we need to compute five things. Prior service cost, prior service cost amortization, service cost, interest cost, and most importantly, pension expense. Now, instead of giving you this as a simulation, I can ask you literally, 20 multiple choice questions about the information that's given here. What I'm trying to say is this, a simulation is no more than multiple choice questions all combined together. And the multiple choice is no more than a simulation framed different. It's all what they are. So the key is you have to understand the topic that you are being given. That's why I'm gonna advise you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com, where I teach about pension. So when you go into the exam, you have to understand pension. The CPA review course don't teach you the material. The CPA review course reviews with you the material. They assume you know it and we are ready to review it. In contrast to farhatlectures.com where I teach you the material. By the time you're done with my lectures, with my practice exercises, you will be ready to take full advantage of your Becker, Roger, Wiley and Glime. I can't replace those. All what I can do is I can help you make them more beneficial for you by increasing your grade 10 to 15 points. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to my YouTube channel and obviously my website. I always ask you also to please like my recording and share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Let's go ahead and get started with this problem. There's a lot of information in this problem. The first thing is you do is you just get an overall picture, overall picture what they're asking you, okay? JJ defined benefit pension plans, specify annual retirement benefit equal to 1.6 times the service years times the final year salary payable at the end of each year. We have one individual, Maggie, was hired by J&J &J at the beginning of 2007 and expected to retire at the end of 2041 after 35 years of service. Her retirement is expected to span 18 years. Maggie's salary is 99000 at the end of 2021, and the company actuary projects her salary to be 325 at retirement. The actuary discount rate is 9%. At the beginning of 2022, the pension formula was amended to 1.8 times service years times final years of service. Amended means change, and it seems they increase the, increase the rate. It could be that the company is making more money. They would like to go ahead and give their employees a push, a push up in their retirement. The amendment was retroactive to, to apply to the increased benefit to prior years. Let me tell you this. There's a lot of information here, a lot of information in this problem. The first thing they want you to compute is the prior service cost. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to draw a picture of what's going on here. So this way you understand, you have to kind of understand the big picture. If you don't understand the big picture, then you will find harder time answering the questions. First of all, Maggie was hired in 2007. So if this is 2007, we have 2007 and she worked from 2007 all the way to 2021, to year 2021. At the beginning of 2022, so this is year 20. 22. So she worked all these years and something happened here. They decided to go back and amend the plan, which is good for Maggie. So simply put, she worked all those years and all those years are 15 years. So she worked all those years and suddenly her company says, guess what? We are going to increase your pension payment when you retire. That's great. That's great. So the first thing they ask us is, what is the prior service cost? Simply put, when you increase Maggie's benefit, the company will have more obligation. And that's what they're asking you about. What is the, what is the company prior service cost at the beginning of 2021? They're asking us right here. What's the prior service cost at, at the beginning of 2021? So let's go ahead and compute this number first. Okay, then we will go ahead and answer the other questions. So let's go ahead and compute the number first. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna look at the old PBO for Maggie and at the amended PBO for Maggie. And the difference between them is the new service cost. 
I'm sorry, not the new service cost, the prior service cost. We're gonna have to compute the new service cost. Okay, so what are we looking at? The old paint, the old plan, header rate of 1.6. So this is how we compute the payment. 1.6, this is the old plan, times 15 years. So this is the 15 years that she worked from 2007. So we're, we're looking at those 15 years, those 15 years right here. Those are the 15 years, because we're gonna have many years. We have to know which years are we doing. So supposedly, uh, based on the old amendment, the payment is 78,000. Now what's gonna happen is this. We need to find what is the present value of those payments. Well, we're gonna take 78,000 times the present value factor. Now, how do we compute the present value factor? That's another important computation. Well, what's gonna happen is this. We're gonna have to pay Maggie 78,000. When do we pay the 78,000? Well, let me tell you when do we pay the 78,000. We're gonna pay this 78,000. Remember, this is 2021, 2022. Now, life will keep on going until 2041. When she retires, 2041, at the end of 2041, she retires here. After retirement, we expect Maggie to live for, let me go back, we expect Maggie to live for 18 years. Or at least that's what we're responsible for paying her. We think she's going to live for 18 years. Therefore, what's going to happen in those 18 years and every year based on the old plan, we would have to pay her 78,000. Therefore, we're going to take 78,000, 78,000 times 8.75663. Therefore, we have to have for Maggie at, at the end of 20, this is the number, end of 2041. When she retired, we have to have this amount of money ready assigned to Maggie. Why? Because this money, it's going to pay Maggie for the next 18 years, $78,000 a year. But this is, we, we need this number at the end of 2041. Well, we need to record the obligation today. If we need to record the obligation today, we need to find the present value of this amount. The present value of this amount is the present value of one payment. So we need to find the present value of one payment. So notice the present value of the annuity. So notice, why did we use n equal to 18 for this figure? Because, because Maggie would need 18 years. She's going to live 18 years. Therefore, we have to find the present value of those 18 years. Now, why did we use the present value using n equal to 20 for the 682,939? Because we need to record the obligation today. How much is Maggie's obligation today? Today, we need to record the liability for Maggie. Well, we're going to discount. So simply put, we're going to discount the 682 at 20 years because she still have 20 years to work. 20 years to work. How 20 years? I know I keep going back and forth. Now we have to go back from 2041 all the way till the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022. This period is 20 years. So notice you have 15 years. You have 18 years after retirement and you have 20 years. So you have a lot of years being thrown around. So after we find our obligation at year 2041, we discount the obligation. So this is, we discount the obligation till today. So today what we need to have, we need to have 100, a liability of 121,857. This liability, let me show you, let me just walk you through it again. This liability after, after 20 years will grow to be 682,939. Then after that, we'll be able to pay Maggie 78,000, 78,000 for the next, for the next 18 years, for the next 18 years, thus completing our commitment. Completing our commitment means paying off our liability for Maggie, which will be 78,000 per year. Okay. So this is the big picture. Now, now we need to compare this to we need to compare this to the new plan. So this is based on the old plan. Now we need to do the same computation, assuming assuming 1.8, 1.8%. Again, we're gonna do the, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back and assume that the that the benefit rate was 1.8 times 15% that she worked between 2007 till 2021. Let me kind of 2007 to 2021 times her final salary expected. Now we are responsible to pay Maggie rather than 78, 87,750. Maggie's gonna be very happy with that news. 
Now we're, we're going to have to do the same thing. How much are we responsible for at the end of 2041? We are responsible for now 768,307. This is the number that we need to have end of 2041 when Maggie retired. Well, if that's the number, if that's our liability, how much is the liability today? Because we need to discount it till today. We discount it till today and we find out that using the same rate, the 20 and the, you know, this is for the 18 and this is the 20 and this is an annuity and this is a single, single, uh, single payment factor, 137, uh, 137,089 dollars. Now we can find what is our prior period, uh, prior service, prior service cost. It's the difference between those two. Notice our prior service cost is the difference between the old plan and the new plan. Therefore, the prior service cost is 14232 Simply put, we have to increase our obligation by 14232 as a result of this change, as a result of this change. How did we find out that? Well, we compared the old plan, how much our obligation will be for Maggie, today versus the new plan and it's 137.89 therefore we answered question one okay since the amendment occurred at the beginning of 2021 amortization of the prior year cost begin in 2022 excellent what is the prior service cost amortization that would be included in pension expense now the question is what do we do with this 14,232 do we make it hit pension expense immediately and the answer is no what do we do with the prior service cost listen to me carefully we amortize it we amortize it over the remaining life uh, expected life of Maggie working at our company Maggie is expected to work from 2021 from 2021 to 2041 she's expected to work 20 years therefore what we're going to do we're going to take this amount and divide it by 20 years the expected remaining life and we're going to amortize every year 762 dollars of this amount into pension expense so this is going to increase our pension expense every year by 762 we don't hit pension expense by the full amount we're going to amortize it spread it out equally so hopefully you understand this big picture. The third question, it's what's the service cost for year 2022? What's the service cost? The service cost is how much Maggie, because she worked an additional year. Remember, we amended the plan. We amended the plan at the beginning, at the beginning of 2022. Now she worked 2022. And when she worked 2022, one additional year, our, our service cost will go up. Well, we have to use the new rate. The new rate is this, 1.8, that's the new benefit rate, times one, which is one year, times her expected future salary, 325,000. Therefore, the service cost uh, is expected to be 5,858. Now, what we're gonna do, this is how much the service cost is. This is what the service cost. But when, when are we gonna need this money? Well, we're gonna need this money, uh, how many years from now? Uh, 18 years 18 years from now 18 years from now well what's going to happen is we're going to compute okay what, what's 18 years how much she's going to live so basically for because she worked like let, let me put it for you this way because she worked for us year 2022 because she worked for us year 2022 after uh, after she retired because of that of that year we're responsible for that particular year for responsible for 51,222. We have to have this amount available because look, she's after this, you know, okay, think of 2041. Because she worked that year for us, because she worked that year for us, okay, because she, that, that for that, I'm, I'm computing the service cost for only one year. So this is 2041. After 2041, remember we pay, we make 18 payments for her because she worked that year we're, we, that year included an additional 5,850, which is for 18 years, the present value of those, we need to have for that year, 51,220. Well, 51,220, that's we need this amount at year 2041. What's the present value of this amount today? The present value of this amount today is 9,962. 9,962. Now, how do we compute 9,962? We discount it based on 19 years. Hold on a second. This is really confusing. Why am I using 19 years? Because after she worked year 2022, what she have left till, till 20, 2041 is only 
19 years. Therefore, we discount the present value back only 19 years. That's why we're using now 19 years. What do we use by the end of 2023 when we do this discount? We use 18 years, so on and so forth, okay? Because now we are looking at the discount from 2041 back to 2022, which is 19 years. Therefore, the service cost is 9,962. Now, uh, I know this is a little bit confusing. Once again, if you have any questions about this particular problem, email me, but I'm trying, you have to understand the big picture or go to my website. And this is what I explained. This is a little bit further. What is the interest cost for year 2022 with respect to Maggie? Now, how do you compute the uh, interest cost? Well, the interest cost, it's the beginning PBO times the rate. Well, we have to know what's the beginning PBO. The beginning means not the ending PBO. Beginning means if we're looking for, 20, for year 2022, we have to look at the beginning of the year. How much was the PBO times the rate? How much was the beginning PBO? Well, the beginning PBO is 137, uh, $137,089. Okay, this is the beginning of the year PBO. We already did this computation. Therefore, we're going to take this amount times 9%, and this is going to give us interest cost. And interest cost is part of pension expense, which is they ask us to compute, compute the pension expense for 2022 with respect to Maggie, assuming a plant asset attributable to her is 150,000 and rate of return what's the rate of return here that's that's interesting i don't have the rate of return uh, and assume the rate of return let's assume uh, i don't know i don't know what the rate of return is let's assume that i think it's 10 percent okay let's take a look at how we compute now the pension expense the pension expense is composed of the current service year cost so this number here this is part of the pension expense your service year cost interest cost this number here, the interest cost is part of the pension expense formula. Then return on plan asset because she has assets in her in her retirement account, 150, and those assets earned or expected to earn 10%. Therefore, as a result, we're going to reduce the pension expense by 15,000 because her assets are working for her. Therefore, it's going to reduce the pension expense. Then we're going to amortize the $762, you remember, because we amended the plan. Now, every year we add $762. Therefore, the pension expense is $8,062. So that's the, the current pension expense that goes on the income statement. So I understand this problem is challenging. This problem is not easy. But if you can understand this problem, then you would um, you have a basic um, I, would, I would not say you're good for pension because pensions we did not do any journal entries uh, we did not deal with the uh, uh, OCI account there's many things I did not deal with in this session because I will overwhelm you so all over, all what I did is ask you to do the basic computation for the numbers now I'm sure I will have another simulation that deals with journal entries but if you want to learn more about this topic go to farhatlectures.com subscribe to my CPA supplemental material. If you're an intermediate accounting student, subscribe to my intermediate accounting. It doesn't really matter. The subscription gives you access to everything. Listen to me carefully. Your CPA exam is a 20 to 30, maybe a 40 year investment, okay, in your career. Take it seriously, pass the exam, invest in yourself. My subscription is practically nominal for the value that I give you. Go ahead, subscribe, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.